Hello, I'm Joe McCanta, Global Head of Mixology and Education for Grey Goose, and welcome to Vodka 101. In this video, I'll be talking all things vodka, answering questions like what is vodka made of and how is vodka made? Make sure you stick around as we'll even touch on how to drink it. There's much debate among Russians and Poles around the origin of the word vodka. Some say it comes from the Polish vodka, others say it's from the Slavic voda, and as with most discussions like this, there's plenty of evidence for both. So let's not speculate for too long and instead dive into what makes vodka, well, vodka. You could say that every spirit spends time in its life as a vodka. All spirits start out as some form of fermented beer or wine, which is then distilled into essentially what could be considered a vodka. Take that product and distill some juniper into it and you have a gin. Take the same spirit and age it, a whiskey albeit in very simple forms. It's generally made with potatoes or grain, but it can be made from almost anything and anywhere, depending on local market rules, of course. What a vodka is made from largely relies quite simply on what the most available source of simple sugars are in the region that it's made. Aside from the base ingredients, the key to any great vodka is the distillation and sometimes the filtration process. This is where the base ferment, the beer or wine, is concentrated through heating and cooling. Alcohol has a much lower boiling point than water, so generally the concentration is brought about by warming the liquid so that the alcohol vaporizes, then cooling this vapor back into a liquid. The water that's left behind is no longer needed, and the liquid from that vapor that has been separated now has a higher ABV, or alcohol by volume, than it did before when it was part water, part alcohol. This process usually takes place in a continuous column still, but occasionally a pot still can be used. Although these are always used to finish an already distilled liquid. The reason for this is because a pot still can never distill to the legally required 96.2% ABV that a vodka needs to be, but only to a much lower 70%. So copper stills, yeah, they're useful, but they're usually just a way of finishing off an already distilled vodka and often they're used to add character where there might be some lacking. The distillate is then generally filtered to remove some or all of the impurities. Filtration will take place by passing the distilled liquid through a substance to further remove particles or impurities. The most common of all filtration is charcoal. However, over time, all sorts of materials have been used, such as cloth, sand, stone, and even in some cases, types of metal or diamonds. Once the filtration has taken place, it's diluted with water to bring it down to its final ABV, a minimum of 40% in the US and 37.5% in Europe. After all, vodka is primarily water and ethanol. At Grey Goose, we believe that wheat, and specifically a French winter wheat, really makes the ultimate ingredient. And long gone are the days of vodka being thought of as, quote, a neutral spirit without distinctive character, aroma, taste, or color as it was, believe it or not, originally classified by the US Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. Our entire approach of using only the finest natural ingredients, along with the spirit maker's savoir-faire, or know-how, that's led us to produce what we feel is the quintessential vodka. Our process is built around retaining the intrinsic flavors of our most prized ingredients, our wheat and water. We distill only once through five steps which allows us complete control over the characteristics and taste of what's taken out, and more importantly, what's left in during distillation. You might see and hear statements like triple distilled a lot. And look, it's often thought that producing the highest quality vodka is brought about by just distilling over and over and over again. However, when you start with the highest quality of ingredients, once is enough. This is what we pride ourselves on at Grey Goose, a vodka that is as close to as nature intended. After all, the best taste comes naturally. Of course, traditionally vodka has been consumed neat. Not to say that it shouldn't still be sipped, but there are so many creative, refreshing, and unique ways to drink our favorite spirit. A great vodka is the most versatile base for cocktails. Equally at home in long serves with refreshing mixers or more complex drinks, which is why a bottle is an absolute staple for any bar or home for that matter. If you're new to vodka and want to try it in something familiar, try something as easy as one part Grey Goose to three parts of your favorite mixer, like a soda, tonic, or ginger ale. If you're looking to experiment further, try one of the many cocktails on show at our homepage, greygoose.com.
I hope that you'll leave today with a newfound appreciation of the world of vodka. And if you'd like to see more videos just like this, keep watching. I'll see you there.